Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Darren and I'm a third year medical student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. Today's video is exactly as the title says. Enjoy. So let's talk about how the ATAR is calculated. A couple of points before we begin. This will be a simple and what I think is a sufficient explanation and just keep in mind what's important and what isn't. The work you put in each day is important. Your studies right now are important but figuring out all the little ATAR scaling points is not really that important. I've always said to leave the maths and the scaling and all the little details to the people who are working and tapping away at the VCAR offices. Here are some resources you guys can check out. The VCAR study designs, there is a study design for each subject and it will explain the topics covered and what the assessments entail. VCAR pass exams for obvious reasons. There's a frequently asked questions page and most of your specific questions can be found online. And I'll link all the websites in the description box below. Our goal for this video is to understand the next two diagrams. This is the first diagram. As you can see, for each individual subject a student studies, they will receive a study score. And what contributes to that study score? Well, students will have tests throughout the year and an exam at the end of the year. And all those study scores, so a study score per subject that the student studies, they will be added up. And that is essentially the student's ATAR. Pretty simple. Let's have a look at this first diagram again. So for each individual subject, students will receive a study score and that study score is contributed to by tests and an exam. So let's focus on the first part of this equation. The tests are called SACs and are different from school to school in terms of when they are, in terms of their difficulty and sometimes in their format as well. The exam at the end of the year, on the other hand, is the same for everyone in the entire state and is sat at the exact same time. Some subjects have two exams, like the maths ones, some subjects have one. So keeping in mind that exams are exactly the same for everyone, whereas SACs vary a lot, it kind of makes sense that for those tests that students have throughout the year, it is more their ranking that matters. So how they sit within their group of students rather than the individual scores, because that will probably vary a bit. The final point with this is that there is a slightly different weighting between the tests throughout the year and that exam at the end of the year. So they both contribute to the study score, but for some subjects, the exam contributes a bit more and for some, the tests contribute a bit more. And now looking at the study score part of this equation, there is a raw and a scaled study score. The raw score for each subject lies between zero and 50. Some subjects then scale up and some scale down. Simply put, scaling is just adjusting for the difficulty of a subject. So if a subject is particularly difficult, then whatever score, whatever raw score the student receives, it will just be moved up by some number of points. And the max scaled score is 55, and it is these scaled scores that are used to calculate the ATAR. Now let's have a look at the second diagram. So a reminder, the scaled study scores for each subject are added up, and those contribute to the student's ATAR. I think this diagram is best explained through an actual results page, so I'll show you guys one now. And just to orient yourself, on the left, you have all the subjects. On the right, you have the scaled subject scores, and you will receive the raw scores as well, but just for this page, We'll just concentrate on the scaled subject scores and we'll ignore the ATAR score for now and focus on that total score at the bottom of your screen. Let's have a look at the left hand side first. As you can see, there are six subjects there and a minimum of four subjects and a maximum of six subjects can contribute to the ATAR. This means that if a student studies seven subjects, the seventh one won't count. Next, just observe that the scaled scores are the ones used. And as you may have noticed, for the top four scores, their full amount is used. So you can see for Latin, the score is 54.31. And on the column on the right, the aggregate contribution, all 54.31 points are used. Whereas for the bottom two subjects, or the lowest two scores, 10% of that score is taken. So instead of 49.48 added to the entire score, 4.94 is used instead. And these scores are all added up, and that gives that total score you see at the bottom of the page. And that total score is what is used to calculate the ATAR. The ATAR is a ranking which illustrates how many students this particular student scored higher than. So it's between 0 and 99.95. So in summary, students generally study between 4 to 6 subjects. The scores for the top 4 subjects are used, the scaled scores, as well as 10% of the 5th and 6th subjects if the student chooses to study more than 4. These scores then add up to a total which makes it very clear where the student sits and this total is then used to calculate the ATAR. And finally, just note that one English subject, whether that's normal English, literature, or English language, has to be in the student's top four, regardless of what the score is. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative. 
Enjoy your weeks and I look forward to seeing you all next time.